My name is Dr. Pete Weber. I'm a neurosurgeon. I work here in San Francisco at California Pacific Medical Center. When we're asked why should somebody have a surgery, we think about a number of aspects of somebody's condition. If they have epilepsy and they're not getting better with medications, we want to know if there's an option to treat their epilepsy with surgery. Patients do have a choice about whether they would want to have surgery. It's always the patient's final decision. If a patient has epilepsy and they're not getting better with medications and they are somebody who's a surgical candidate, we will offer that to them, teach them about the good parts of surgery, the risks of surgery, and what it might have to offer them, and then let them make a decision. Your neurologist is a big part of the team taking care of people with epilepsy, almost always involves a neurologist. Here at our facility and at most comprehensive facilities, there are specialized neurologists who treat only patients with epilepsy. They play a role in the treatment and the eventual decisions for surgery. The surgery decision is though the final decision is usually the surgeon's decision and then also the patient's decision. But it takes a full team of people to make these decisions. The patients who are better suited in general to surgery are those whose seizures can be localized to an area of the brain. Those seizures that are called complex partial seizures are the ones that we most frequently see where we can do something with surgery. If somebody's seizures start in the temporal lobe, that's an area of the brain that with proper testing and scans, we can determine it's either one that can be removed or one that can be partially removed in order to try to cure seizures. Those who have generalized seizures, who have generalized tonic-clonic seizures and certain other kinds of seizures like myoclonic seizures are most often not candidates for surgery. The number of patients who have these kinds of surgeries every year take for instance temporal lobectomies which would be the most common seizure operation is somewhere in the thousand to a few thousand throughout the United States. There are probably a lot more people that are candidates for these kinds of operations that do not get the operation for one reason or another. And we would hope that anybody who was a candidate would eventually have an opportunity to have a discussion with people who are experts in these areas to decide whether or not they are somebody who should consider surgery. With temporal lobectomies, somewhere between 75 and 90 percent of the patients will be seizure-free after an operation or have only very rare seizures. There are other operations that we do that are still good operations, but they don't carry the same success rates. We do operations in other areas of the brain, for instance. The highest success rates in this field comes in the area of temporal lobectomies, and they are also the most common operation that we do for epilepsy. There are a number of things that one would want to know before choosing surgery. As a patient, one would want to speak with their doctors to decide whether they are a good candidate for surgery or not a good candidate. There are risks of surgery and there are some people who may not be good candidates because of other medical problems. If somebody has severe high blood pressure or other medical risk factors, these are reasons they may not want to have surgery. Everybody is different. We look at each person as an individual and everybody's test results may differ. 
in some subtle ways. And it's important to bring all of those test results back together in a story that makes sense as to whether or not this person would be a good candidate or not a good candidate for surgery. Every surgery for epilepsy, every surgery of any kind, will have some risk. Most of the time, people are fine. They're the same or better after surgery. The risks of surgery are low. They're acceptably low, but they're not zero. There is a chance of loss of memory. It's more common when we operate on the left temporal lobe, but still not that common. There are chances of damage to the speech centers. There's chances of causing weakness or numbness. There's the risks of other more devastating complications. The truth is that the risks of very serious complications is very low. We rarely ever see anybody die from this kind of operation. And in general, people do very well. If you're someone who has epilepsy and you think you might be interested in this idea of surgery for your seizures, it always starts with your neurologist or an epilepsy neurologist, a specialist in the area. I recommend that you discuss it with your neurologist or if you don't have access to one, then speak to your primary care physician and they can refer you to those specialists who can start that process of investigation to see whether or not you're a candidate for an operation for your seizures.